What's up everybody, GoGuard18 here, and today I'm bringing you the next entry in my historical garage and gameplay review series. Today we're going to be taking a look at the T28 Super Heavy Tank. Now of course, links are going to be up at the top and the bottom to get you to the garage and gameplay portions of this video. Sit back, relax, I really hope you enjoy this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. The T-28 was an American super heavy tank conceived during a conference on, in March of 1944 between Ordnance Department and Army Ground Forces personnel and resulted in an agreement to build five prototypes. The T-28 heavy tank was the largest ever developed for the U.S. military. Built in 1945 to counter the new generation of German heavy tanks, the end of the war in Europe ensured that only two prototypes would ever be built of the 25 that were originally planned. American war planners believed their T-28 would be called upon to break through whatever stout German defenses were concentrated at the famed Siegfried Line in the European theater and would be a primary armored spearhead in the inevitable invasion of the Japanese mainland in the Pacific theater. Design and manufacture of the T-28 was handled by the Pacific Car and Foundry, primarily makers of heavy trucks, with the T-23 superstructure being used in order to save time. The T-28 came equipped with a 105mm T-5E1 gun. This was supplemented by an anti-personnel 50 caliber Browning M2 heavy machine gun, or Mall Deuce, fitted above the crew hatch as a secondary weapon. The 105mm main gun fielded a muscle velocity of 3,700 feet per second with a range of up to 12 miles. The T-28 tank was a casemate style design and was crewed by four servicemen. As a casemate style vehicle, the gun traversed from its hull mounted position and was limited to 10 degrees right and 11 degrees left. Elevation was from a maximum of 19.5 degrees to a minimum of negative 5 degrees. This limitation, coupled with a low profile casemate style type hull, meant that the tank was expected to concentrate its firepower against forward place targets or areas. It was the lack of the 360 degree traversing turret that categorized the T-28 more as a self-propelled gun motor carriage and not a tank proper. In 1945, the T-28 was redesignated as such and became the T-95 gun motor carriage. However, in 1946, the T-95 was redesignated yet again to become the super heavy tank T-28 due to its extremely heavy armor. The T-28 hull measured in at 11.10 meters long, was 4.3 meters wide, and had a height of 2.84 meters, weighing in at 104.7 U.S. short tons or 209,439 pounds. The armor was massive compared to other tanks of the day, 12 inches at her thickest. The lower front hull armor alone was covered by 5.25 inches or 130 millimeters of armor while the sides totaled up to 2.5 inches or 64 millimeters in the thickness. The armor of the T-28 would have been able to deflect the 88 millimeter projectile round used by the German heavy tanks such as the Tiger and the Tiger II. The T-28 came equipped with four individual sets of tracks in order to spread the weight of the vehicle across different types of surfaces. Each set was 12.9 inches wide. When running on paved roads, the outer two tracks could be removed and actually towed behind the tank itself, which is the version of the T-28 represented in War Thunder. The engine was a Ford GAF V8 series power plant delivering up to 500 horsepower, giving the T-28 a lowly top speed of 8 miles per hour, making it something of a liability by any regard as it was easily outmaneuvered by most tanks on the battlefield. The T-28, therefore, would have had trouble keeping up with a mobile mechanized front considering it was to be used as the spearhead of such action. Two prototypes of the T-28 were built. They underwent evaluation at the Aberdeen Proving Grounds and Fort Knox facilities until 1947. In 1947, one of the two T-28s was heavily damaged by an engine fire during trials at Yuma Proving Grounds and was broken up and sold for scrap. The T-28 never went into service, but was retained to test the durability of components on such a heavy vehicle. Work on it ended before the completion as the War Department decided to stop the development of vehicles of that sort of weight, and the T-28 program terminated on October 1947. Today, the only remaining T-28 is being prepped for display at the National Armor and Cavalry Museum at Fort Benning, Georgia. Now let's take a look and see how it's represented in War Thunder. 
All right, now here's the T28 Super Heavy Tank as it's listed in War Thunder Rank 4 vehicle. It's got a battle rating of 6.7, should keep you out of those 8.0 battle rating matches, you know, with a plus minus one battle rating swing the matchmaker supposedly looks for. One of the first things you're going to notice about this tank is missing the outside tracks. That's reserved for the T95, which is a non-premium vehicle. You have to do the slow grind to get there it, or spend a butt ton of money and convert free XP. Um, mass is listed at almost 60 tons, which is about 40 tons short of what the historical reference model was. Uh, engine power does have that 500 horsepower, propelling it to a maximum speed of 13 kilometers per hour or eight miles per hour which is historically accurate maximum inclination of 41 degrees turret rotation speed 11.8 degrees per second gun depression minus five degrees to plus 19 degrees which is historically accurate whole armor of 305 millimeters on the front 50 on the sides 50 on the rear which is pretty much historically accurate and you're going to notice it is rocking that 105 millimeter t5 e1 cannon which is also historically accurate. Next, we're gonna take a look at the actual armor as it's shown in War Thunder. Here, you've got that 305 millimeters. You've got that 133 millimeter lower plate at that great angle, which gives you, when you're looking as you're pretty much gonna be battling folks, you know, looking down on it, it's gonna have that sloping. So you're getting an effective thickness of 130, or of 338 millimeter um, effective thickness which means even the lower plate on this thing the lower glacis is just a bull to try and uh, try and damage um, you do see these cupolas on top with only 76 millimeters that is a sore point um, because with HE shells you're seeing some penetrations come in here um, and exploding downwards knocking out your crew members you know just about any shell uh, from uh, around 2 to tier 3 can penetrate these things and uh, if they get lucky and get some uh, shot dispersion downwards, you're pretty well screwed. All right, here's that 50 millimeters armor. Here's the 64 millimeters armor uh, referenced in the historical model, um, showing your 50 millimeters on back. You know, of course, you get your tracks here, but there's plenty of space in between these tracks to get shot and get penetrated. Now we're going to look at X-ray. Here's your armor configuration. Pretty standard ammo on the sides for tank destroyers, the casemate style tank destroyers. You see it does have the four crew members, historically accurate, all everybody spread out. You know, if you get shot through the sides, you're pretty well cooked anywhere in here. And then you've got this massive fuel tank. Um, that's yeah, I mean you're gonna get set on fire in this thing. That that to me is probably one of the biggest issues I've had in this tank is getting shot and set on fire multiple times. Um, it, it just happens a lot um, and there's the x-ray version of it now let's uh, take a look at the modifications on it see what we get as far as rounds go you get a t32 armor piercing ballistic cap shell t29 e3 armor piercing ballistic go oh, t29 e3 armor piercing composite rigid which you know doesn't have any uh, explosive charge to it, so you're just getting penetrating shots. And then you've got the T30E1 HE shell. 17 millimeters of penetration there. Standoff ranges is where you're going to want to fight with this tank. Uh, anything from 500 to 1,000 meters. Um, so you're looking at you know 285 to 251 millimeters of penetration with the APCR shells. And then the T32 APBC shells. You're looking at five, uh, 196 to 171 millimeters of penetration. That's the main thing I use on this tank because, like I said, you're not seeing those tier eight, uh, you know, those, oh, I'm sorry, battle rating eight vehicles. So there's not a lot of need to shoot these T2093s. You just don't get enough damage off the shell. And there you have it. Now we're going to take a look at some gameplay. Going to get Ace Tanker in this game first place. Going to really show you the proper way to use this tank um, and how it can work out if you play the tank the right way. So sit back, relax, hope you enjoy.
one spawn point. Yeah, I'm going towards A. <laughs> Here's you next. Fluster, fuck traffic jam. Yeah, I'm just fucking parking, letting these motherfuckers go. Maybe they know where they're going, because I goddamn sure don't. Hey, welcome to everybody join the stream. I just hit two tanks with one shot. <laughs> cool. God damn it. Fucking IS-2. Moving up. Roger. Serves him right. Shot his freaking barrel, didn't really pay attention to what I was shooting at. Booba! Them tigers backing up like, eh, never mind. <laughs> no, they gotta have something to be afraid of. I'm just going to stay parked out here in the middle of the field and bring in my bomber. <laughs> Good.
set that Chi 84 on your tail. He's on fire. Oh, I'm. I'm. Gotcha. Alright, no. I'm still up, but my bombs are away. Alright. I got a tiger. Got a bunch of guys sitting back there spawn. Yeah. I love it. I get it on with my bomb and run, and my tank's still sitting here just like I left it. <laughs> Same poor little guy still shooting at me, too. Bless his heart. He's trying real hard. But you know, that's the thought that counts. Right. I'm pretty well lined up taking shots at me. Yeah. change their minds. <laughs> Where are you going? Aw. Uh -huh. They don't want to play with me anymore. team over there with you. <laughs> Look at how they just said the hell with even going this way. I oh, thanks. We'll uh, we'll go around. Shit, I got repair. Oh, uh, <laughs> blue that comical blowing up of the barrel that looks like one of them old Acme cigars. Yeah, yeah. I love that. That never gets old. I got another bomber. <laughs> Use it. This fucking Panther G that's out here. Now somebody beat me. I can't fucking reload. Somebody beat me with it. Way out. I want him. Yeah. Hey, welcome to anybody who just joined the stream. Thank you for stopping by. Appreciate it. Hope you hang out with us for a little bit. Son of a bitch at the dirt. Ooh. Someone went to the table so hard. That you speedy little shit. <laughs> Artillery, that's not very nice. Right. I 
got stoned, didn't it? aggressive in this thing I want to just try and help get the team to move up hmm. I missed that shot Goodbye. Hey, that same guy you got in ET. Do what? That was the same guy that you killed that was in that BTR. <laughs> well, you know he's upset with me. You know I ain't getting no damn Christmas card from him. Come on, one more, one more, one more. Damn. Good game. And that is how you play the damn C28. <laughs> Yay, battle trophy. Give me 9,000 damn. Oh, 10,000. I'm going to spend it all in one place, boys. Dougie. <laughs> Four, six, eight, ten, twelve of the metal thingies. Word. There we go. All right, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the T-28 Super Heavy Tank. I uh, hope you enjoyed that gameplay footage. That just really highlights you know, the standard casemate style vehicle gameplay, front towards enemy, and uh, just keep that main gun firing. Um, don't get too aggressive, don't push up too far. This thing really excels, believe it or not. I have my best games in this tank in the city maps um, where I have some support and really pay attention to your mini map. Make sure your side streets beside you are covered and you can really lock down a street with this thing. People tend to panic when they see one of these things in a one-on-one -on -one engagement. Um, so, you know, play it right, have some good support, be mindful of your surroundings, and you can actually have some pretty fun, uh, pretty good games in this tank. All right, hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Be sure to like and follow for more great footage. Until next time, this is GoGuard18, signing off.